Tom Lehrer's biting musical satire is best approached through his three live albums, An Evening Wasted with Tom Lehrer from 1959, Tom Lehrer Revisited from 1960, and That Was the Year That Was from 1965. His wit, sarcastic, lacerating, acidic, yet always cheerful, animates his music in songs whose lyrics are permanent fixtures in the minds of his few but fierce devotees, of whom I am one. Tom Lehrer was also a mathematician. He co-authored a couple of papers and taught mathematics both at Harvard and at the University of California at Santa Cruz, home of the Banana Slugs. During my two years as a graduate student at UC Santa Cruz, from 1999 to 2001, I became friends with Tom, and after I left, we kept up a loose correspondence by letter and email through 2014. When Tom passed away last month in July of 2025, I went through some old papers and notes, mathematical and musical, that he had given me over the years. One that made me laugh was a page from a 2011 issue of a Russian journal. If you can sound out Cyrillic characters, you will see the names of Lobachevsky and Tom Lehrer, for this, in fact, was a verse translation by a Mr. Voronkov into Russian of the lyrics of Tom's classic song Lobachevsky, in which, purely for comedic purposes, with no basis in fact, as Tom himself readily acknowledged, he sings about Lobachevsky as though he were not a great mathematician, but rather a great plagiarist. Despite the slander of poor Lobachevsky, it is an excellent song. At any rate, what most amused me about this page in Russian was Tom's laconic note at the top. In case you missed this. Yes, Tom, I'm afraid I did somehow miss that particular issue of that particular Russian journal. But it was another paper in my files that led me to make this video. Namely, this one. A bit of verse with the following heading. The calculus problem presented below in expanded form appeared in more conventional prose for the hour exam in Math 1B given by Tom Lehrer at Harvard on May 9th, 1951. When Tom gave this piece of paper to me 25 years ago, I was so pleased by the verse that I did not think to ask him whether he had written that prefatory note in the third person or why exactly this was problem three. I never thought to ask him later, and now it's too late. Be that as it may, I have never seen this calculus problem in verse printed anywhere, and I have found no reference to it on the internet. So, as a tribute to Tom, and in an effort to save, or at least propagate, a rare bit of Lariana, I offer the following calculus problem that he wrote back in 1951. People never cease to wonder at amazing Lake Rotunda. If you've seen it, you will understand how it first got its name. Free of inlet and of cape, precisely circular its shape, and tourists come from miles to gape, so universal is its fame. A highway now makes its appearance, by the shore allowing clearance, tangent to the circumference, at a point, let's call it A. Though the tale does not relate if it is federal or state, suffice it to say that it's straight, that's all that matters anyway. Straight across from A is a pretty village, by no means a city, rather just an itty-bitty hamlet that is known as B. From B's dock, the trip complete to where the lake and highway meet is just about 8,000 feet, a nice round number, you'll agree. Now it seems some poor misguided local big shot had decided that a way should be provided from the village to the road, though he privately conceded that it wasn't really needed. With the governor he pleaded, and the contract was bestowed. It was, of course, a monumental stroke of fate coincidental that the order governmental went to Big Shot's older brother. Brother was a sly old crook who said, I'm very glad I took the job, for I would rather rook the government than any other. Stipulated in the order was a bridge across the water, then a roadway from the border straight to where the highway ran. Though padding on all costs was great, he still agreed the highest rate he could, with straight face charge, was eighty grand a foot for bridges span. Likewise, though it was far from three Fifty. Still, he felt he'd make a nifty profit if he soaked them fifty G's a foot on roadway price. Though it may bear no relation to the truth, the stipulation simplifies the computation, makes the numbers come out nice. His brain with thoughts of lucre teeming, now this shameless, self-esteeming, dirty, capitalistic scheming.
money-grubbing, profiteering Wall Street slob, money-grubbing politician, bloated and self-styled patrician, called to him a mathematician, said, I have for you a job. I place in you my firm reliance. Tell me now, O oh man of science, how I best may shaft my clients. Maximize my graft for me. They say that when he worked it out, it took five minutes. I don't doubt it. Well, dear reader, how about it? Can you do as well as he? And that is Tom Lehrer's optimization problem. Naturally, I will leave the solution to you to work out for yourself. You'll need to be able to explain to Big Shot's older brother how he should locate point P, the spot where his bridge and road will meet, so as to maximize the project's total cost. And of course, you should be able to tell him what that maximum cost will be. There are different ways you could set this one up, including a nice way to do it without imposing Cartesian coordinates on the plane. Oh, and I will admit that it took me more than five minutes to work this one out. Enjoy.